four results. A key finding of this study is that in the context of a first year accounting unit, there is evidence we can support students to meet the challenges of demonstrating competencies in critical thinking at a foundational or introductory level. This can be achieved through an integrated set of interventions designed to first support students to change how they experience key aspects of how they learn as a precondition for them to demonstrate critical thinking competencies. And the time to support students to better learn how to learn is in the first year of their studies, which could provide an enabling foundation for them to further demonstrate their critical thinking competencies throughout the rest of their university studies. TDC framework, evidence from students. The critical thinking competencies in the TDC framework are categorized into cognitive skills and dispositions, habits of the mind. This section considers evidence from the study of 101 students in five offerings of a first year accounting unit over three years, 2019 to 2021, concerning their experience of some of these critical thinking competencies. Cognitive skills. There was evidence first-year accounting students felt challenges in demonstrating cognitive skills required for critical thinking. There was also evidence they arrive with preconceived perceptions about what accounting is that are not supportive of applying critical thinking in this discipline. We also consider how first-year accounting units can focus on considering the why as well as the what on challenging preconceptions about accounting and on developing an awareness and increased predisposition to introductory aspects of critical thinking competencies. We will consider evidence for the demonstration of the cognitive skills of interpretation, analysis, evaluation, making inferences, explanation, self-regulation, and other challenge assumptions, open-minded about divergent worldviews. Interpretation. There was evidence accounting students in first year can be supported to demonstrate the critical thinking competency of interpretation that has the potential to support them to demonstrate other critical thinking competencies in their later studies. After completing more technical tasks, such as calculating ratios, the demonstration of interpretation skills can become one of the challenges faced by accounting students in the assessed learning tasks. I consider myself reasonably proficient with spreadsheets, so I did not find the mechanics of calculating the ratios particularly arduous. It was straightforward. The challenge is in interpreting the information for my company. That required some deeper thought. Student. In a first year accounting unit, students can come with preconceived perceptions about what accounting is. As they are provided with the opportunity to question and consider these preconceptions, they can be supported to demonstrate their interpretation skills. When the lecturer goes back to the basic questions of what is accounting, it makes me think about the actual answer to the question. Instead of jumping straight into teaching us about what to do in accounting and what accountants do, he starts with the basics, which makes me, and I'm sure many others, think about this basic yet thoughtful question. Student. There was evidence students were able to deepen their understanding of some of the introductory concepts demonstrating an ability to comprehend and interpret. The balance sheet is one of the key financial reports prepared by firms. I used to believe that this report showed the position of the firm regarding assets, liabilities and equity. Now I understand that yes, I was correct. However, it is important to note that this report does not show the creation or destruction of value over time, just value for a particular point in time. 
How is this report even useful if it, is, if it only shows information for one day? How long does this one day of information stay relevant? This would be like my bank account. At one point in time I have this much money, but I'm guessing by tomorrow that figure would have changed. Student. And the concept of trust in business, which underlies the structure of double entry accounting, can also be considered, which can support students to interpret aspects of the financial statements as they are being introduced to them. Trust. We always come back to trust. I believe it is the most important aspect of a business. We just cannot measure it. Without trust, the entity concept of firms being separate to the owners would be impossible. You can see just how much is entrusted in the firm by looking at the balance sheet in the equity section, by how much has been invested. You can also look at the liability section to see how much the debt providers believe in the firm. The balance sheet shows you how much you need trust to perform business. Student. Students were also able to demonstrate their capacities to interpret some of the introductory concepts they were learning, such as the concept of cost of goods sold and the way accounting matches revenue and expenses in a period. When I discovered the reasoning behind why we include the accounts cost of goods sold and revenue, it was another light bulb moment for me. I'd always known what the accounts were and had an idea of what they meant. However, I would not made the connection that we need these accounts to put the cost associated with the inventory in the same period that we sold the inventory. I had always thought the cost of goods sold was just the amount we had spent to purchase the recent inventory, not the sold inventory. Therefore, all the stock my work has in the warehouse will not be included in cost of goods sold until that stock is physically sold. Although now thinking about the name, I'm not sure why I did not click on sooner. Student. Students were able to develop some new realisations about what accounting is, which then led them to be motivated about learning more particularly in relation to the practical application of concepts. I always thought of accounting as representing the actions that have happened in a firm. I'm starting to realise that accounting just as much helps to decide what happens as it does to show the outcome. This is something I'm finding useful and I'm looking forward to seeing how all the costing ideas are used in a practical context. Student. Analysis. Students were able to apply the critical thinking competency of analysis as they identified inferential relationships and broke the material into its constituent parts and evaluated it. A key initial relationship for first year students to identify is that the financial statements are interconnected and to begin to realise they together are giving us a way to understand a business. Working in an accounting office, I see various financial statements daily, but in reading this chapter, I was able to finally see how they interconnect with one another and begin to develop an understanding of the information I'm looking at. To see that these statements and this information is more than just numbers, that it allows us a way to visualise and understand a business. Student. Indeed, an insight that students gained was that accounting is not simply about the numbers, but about the business that the numbers seek to represent. This is a key early step in demonstrating the critical thinking competency of analysis. I learned about accrual accounting in year 12 at high school. Balance sheets, income statements are like second nature now. I see them and I'm off in rolling down the columns and across in a spreadsheet. But something that has only dawned on me now is that financial statements like income statements and balance sheets can say a lot about a business. Student. First year students can face challenges which can initially feel insurmountable. 
This is particularly the case when using actual financial statements of their own real firm. As they were able to break the material down into its constituent parts and determine how the parts related to one another and to the overall structure, they were able to progress in their understanding, grow in their curiosity, and in turn strengthen their confidence in their own ability to reason. To begin with going through the annual report almost seemed an insurmountable task to develop understandings about the materials being presented. But in breaking it into sections and looking at the notes which were relevant to what I was identifying, this task seems achievable. In this, I was curious to discover what other comprehensive income was and how it affected the business. In doing this, I've used the notes to the financial statements. Now that I understand where to look for this information, I feel far more confident in proceeding, student. A realisation that there are a lot of judgments and grey areas in accounting is also an important insight to support the demonstration of the critical thinking competency of analysis. After learning the two ways of attaching direct and indirect costs to cost objects, I was not expecting a deeper or intense scrutinisation on how the costs were allocated until I realised that costing could become grey in areas which deeply intrigued me. Not a set way of doing it, just guidelines and approaches you can use to get you to the method that works best. Student. Evaluation. Evaluation involves assessing the credibility of statements or other representations. It includes making judgments based on criteria and standards and using background knowledge, knowledge of the situation and previously established conclusions. Evaluation was demonstrated by first year students in a limited way. It was demonstrated in terms of the potential of doing evaluation rather than making well-considered evaluations themselves. This is not unexpected by first year students who are developing their initial understanding about the basics of accounting. When ratios were introduced, students demonstrated an understanding of some of the nuances involved and that they needed to use their own judgment as they interpreted the ratios rather than use a simplistic and standard set of rules to mechanically assess the ratios. This shows me that you cannot fully understand what is going on in the firm from the ratios. They are by no means a cheat code. They are tools which apply differently to each firm depending on how they operate and in which sector. It is also dependent on the stage the business is at. A firm could be in a consolidation period and thus look very good. Alternatively, a firm could be investing heavily in capital that may not return a profit for a couple of years. Even though they are operating well, some of the ratios would suggest otherwise. Student. And as key concepts about cost accounting were introduced, students were able to start to demonstrate more nuanced views about the role of management accounting. This chapter is about if accounting can help or hinder managers to gain an understanding of the costs in the firm. I'd always thought accounting could answer all questions about the costs of a firm. I've learned over the past few weeks that accounting does not necessarily give you the answer. Accounting is more of a tool used to discover the answer if you know how to use it properly. Student. Making inferences. Another critical thinking competency is making inferences, which includes identifying and securing elements needed to draw reasonable conclusions, considering relevant information and drawing inferences or conclusions that are supported by evidence. There was evidence students demonstrated the foundational aspects of identifying and securing elements needed to draw reasonable conclusions. Students started to consider issues of value and of value creation or destruction in business and accounting. 
What do I think value is? I think value could be described to measure how much something means to you. Something sentimental or ir irreplaceable. I'd never associated the word value with business. Stating that businesses create, destroy or exchange value was a new concept to me. I'd always view firms as a way of making or losing money. I've now discovered there is much more to it. How does the role of accounting help increase value in a firm? How does value differ from business to business? Student. As students considered the concept of value and value creation in accounting and in business, they were able to draw inferences or conclusions supported by evidence that led them to broaden and develop their perspectives. What other value can a business provide other than monetary? I always believed a business's sole purpose was to make a profit and create monetary value. But while reading the study guide, I've come to understand that businesses do not just work for monetary value, but also to increase people's value of life and to work to benefit people and their needs. Student. Students were also able to consider the impact of business on society. As the numerous businesses were listed in Yapoon, a small coastal town in Queensland referred to in the study guide, I came to realise the sheer number of businesses in the world. It made me question just how many there must be. It shows just how much of an impact and massive part businesses play in our society. Student. Students were also able to ask questions and develop curiosity in how accounting and business can create value and make a difference in people's lives. How exactly can we make a difference in our lives and the lives of those close to us through business? I'm interested in learning more about how a difference can be made for the better. In terms of business, what is the definition of value? Is it simply monetary value or is it also something else? How could accounting hinder us in creating value in business? I'm interested in learning how I may be able to help business in making a difference and creating value to benefit themselves, their employees and their customers. Student. Explanation. Students provided evidence of demonstrating introductory levels of the critical thinking competency of explanation focused mainly on being able to state the result of their reasoning with limited supporting justification. They were also able to define terms and evaluate definitions. There was limited evidence of more advanced aspects of the explanation critical thinking competency, such as being able to clearly explain and defend the reasoning by which an individual arrived at a specific decision. As students studied concepts such as contribution margin, they provided evidence of being able to think more broadly about the impact of a business beyond its owners and to state the results of their reasoning. Focusing on contribution margins alone is only of benefit to equity investors, something I would not have thought much about before reading this part of the study guide. Upon reading this, I had a realisation that if you are not considering all the other parties with interest in a firm, then your company is only based on profits for its owners. It made me think that if your product had a great contribution margin, but at the same time a huge negative impact on the environment, then a lot of other people could become disgruntled. Student. Students found themselves changing their view of accounting, as also discussed above under the interpretation competency and were able to state the results of their reasoning with limited or no supporting justification and communicate new questions they were asking. Before starting this unit, I thought accounting was using financial information to help make decisions for a business. I remember doing accounting in high school. We took the information from the business and decided on various ideas such as, should the business expand? Should the business outsource? Should the business have less staff, etc. I quickly realised that there is a lot more to accounting. After reading the introduction and chapter one of the study guide, my view of accounting has changed. 
Now I believe accounting is a business model that you use to read information to discover the position of a firm. This has also had me thinking, what if the information is read wrong? Can the information be read incorrectly? Is that the difference between a good or bad accountant? As I continue through this unit, I'm hoping to discover the answers to these questions. Student. Self-regulation. Students were also able to demonstrate aspects of the critical thinking competency of self-regulation as they were able to become aware of and monitor their own cognitive activities. This could occur when they applied what they were learning to their workplace. Embarking on ratios was a new experience for me. I'm finding in completing this unit that I'm continuously developing and connecting new learning to existing knowledge and implementing it in my workplace when I'm looking at the financials as they cross my desk every day. Coming into this unit, and I'm sure I'm not alone here, I thought that I knew what accounting was about, thinking it was all about the numbers and everything balancing correctly. Now my eyes have been opened to see a whole new aspect of how accounting can truly provide a virtual view of a business and its realities, and allow us to identify aspects of a business that could use improvement to become more profitable and sustainable. Student. Other cognitive skills. Students were able to demonstrate some of the other cognitive skills, in particular challenge assumptions and open-minded about divergent worldviews. This was supported through the intervention of teacher-student relationship, where right answers were not imposed, but curiosity, questioning and exploration were encouraged. Challenge assumptions. As students began to question some of their preconceived perceptions, such as what is accounting, they were able to demonstrate other cognitive skills, such as challenge assumptions. It also made me think when I thought I already know something, but then the lecturer makes me question it. When it is spoken about what accounting is and then ends with the comment, or is it? It makes you ponder about whether you truly know the answer or if you are just agreeing to the original comment. I believe that this links back to how the lecturer is teaching us. Instead of stating the facts or answers, he's making us think and getting us involved in our learning. Student. Open-minded about divergent worldviews. Students were also able to consider the human element of business and accounting, which introduces ambiguity and challenges a simplistic view of what accounting is. However, after reading the first chapter, I came to realise my simple black and white view of the world and accounting does not allow for reflection or the consideration of the human condition, which is key to decision making and reading deeper into a text or situation. I realise that in accounting, the books may appear to be black and white, but people's lives are not. Accountants may deal with figures and formulas, but they also deal with people. So I was somewhat distressed when the study guide challenged my definition of accounting because I was forced to rethink my beliefs and question my simplistic views of accounting. Student. This completes the results in relation to demonstrating cognitive skills in the TDC framework, which relate to attributes or abilities of students. The other category of critical thinking competencies in the TDC framework is dispositions, which are habits of the mind or attitudes. We will now consider evidence of students demonstrating these competencies. Dispositions, habits of mind. Students express several dispositions, habits of mind, that were part of the critical thinking competencies of the TDC framework. The competencies emphasised were confident in own ability to reason and inquisitive. Confident in own ability to reason. In a first year accounting unit, confidence is a critical issue for students to demonstrate critical thinking skills. 
Early in the term, students express the desire to develop confidence in their own ability to reason, rather than passively rely on the thoughts and opinions of others. I'm hoping that this unit will encourage my critical thinking and assist me to develop my own confidence in expressing my thoughts rather than simply rote learning and repeating back others' knowledge. Student. Students acknowledge they lack confidence and that confidence is a key to being able to understand for themselves what they are learning and to develop their critical thinking skills. Confidence is something that I lack, but very willing to learn how to gain. I've discovered that with this newfound way of learning, confidence is key. I need to be confident in the viewpoints that I gather from the key ideas discussed. When I have confidence mixed with a new way of learning, I will be able to discuss them with my own words and relate the concepts to my own life. This ensures I understand them and not just regurgitate the information learned. Student. And students recognise developing this confidence is a challenging process as they had concerns, questions and doubts, even as they aspired to build their confidence in their own ability to reason. I have concerns and questions. What if the idea I have created from the concept is incorrect? How can I make sense of something I do not understand? I'm not sure how I can relate everything back to my life. I've always relied on teachers being there for me. I guess you could say I was a lazy learner. I hope over this unit I can build my confidence and take charge of my own learning. Student. Inquisitive. Being curious, having questions and wanting to know and understand is an important disposition habit of mind to support critical thinking. Students gave evidence of demonstrating an inquisitive disp disposition. I agree with the lecturer that inputting every line individually into a spreadsheet helped me understand more about what I was entering. Just by having to double check spelling and the equations, I was picking up on what things were. I'm so used to just copying and pasting my job, it has made me lazy. I think this has a lot to do with why I do not understand what I am doing at work a lot of the time. I have noticed I have been asking a lot more questions now at work and wanting to know more about what I am entering. Student. As some preconceived notions may be challenged, this can open the opportunity to consider new possibilities and insights supporting demonstration of the competency of being inquisitive about a wider range of issues. Another concept I found intriguing was what is accounting? Prior to commencing this unit, I thought accounting referred to representing an entity in a monetary value through financial reports, which would indicate to interested parties its ability to make a profit. Little did I know until reading chapter one of the study guide that if we study accounting and focus on the numbers, we can subtly start to feel the numbers are the answer, rather than the business reality the numbers seek to represent. This was quite a wake-up call for me. I realised this was exactly what I have been doing. Since I came to this realisation that I misinterpreted what accounting really was, it has led me to think extensively of how much more there is to it, especially with how common it is that people in senior positions in our current business world have an accounting background. Student. Using the TDC framework, there is evidence first year students demonstrated at an introductory level critical thinking competencies in the context of studying accounting. There is evidence that supporting students to challenge assumptions about what accounting is, understanding what we need to go beyond the numbers, the signs to what they are telling us about the business, the signified, developing curiosity about what accounting numbers may tell us, and challenging and broadening views about value and value creation in business can support first year accounting students to demonstrate critical thinking competencies at an introductory level. 
This could provide a foundation for further demonstration by accounting students of their critical thinking competencies in later years of their accounting studies. These might focus on analysis, evaluation and explanation, as well as deepen and strengthen a broader range of competencies than in first year. Studies on applying the TDC framework to second and third year accounting units would be valuable to explore how more advanced competencies could be demonstrated in accounting students, building on the foundations laid in first year. Five, conclusion. There is no currently agreed upon definition of critical thinking within accounting education and the accounting profession. The TDC framework has the potential to provide such a definition. This study demonstrates how the TDC framework can be applied to considering the demonstration of critical thinking skills by accounting students. It is hoped this study will encourage others to use the TDC framework and will support its use as a common language and definition for the study of critical thinking skills by accounting students. The results of this study provide insights into how we can support first year accounting students to demonstrate introductory levels of critical thinking skills. It describes a set of integrated interventions employed in a first year accounting unit at an Australian university. These interventions are grounded firmly in the scholarship of learning and teaching, and they aim to support change in how students experience four key aspects of how they learn. Further discussion and guidance on these interventions is provided in Turner and Baskerville 2013. Applying the TDC framework, evidence is provided of students demonstrating critical thinking, cognitive skills and dispositions. Previous research has found it difficult to support accounting students to learn actively and deeply. English et al. 2004, Hall et al. 2004, Ballantyne et al. 2008, Fox et al. 2010, Williams et al. 2019. And to practice critical thinking, Abbott and Pallet Nick 2018, Walcott and Sargent 2021. A limitation of this research is that the data was collected from undergraduate students enrolled at one university, although it was taken from five offerings of the unit over three years. As learning is contextual and relational, the results of this study are specifically associated with the students and teachers in this unit at one institution, which could be different from learning experiences provided at other universities or in other disciplines within the same university. Future research could compare data at different institutions and within different learning contexts. A compelling finding of this study is that a set of integrated interventions can support change in how students experience key aspects of how they learn and demonstrate critical thinking skills. It is expected this study may encourage others to innovate and develop ways to support the demonstration of critical thinking skills by accounting students, applying the TDC framework. It is challenging to support accounting students to move beyond the accounting numbers and a more passive technical approach to demonstrate skills such as critical thinking. This study indicates there are possible solutions to this challenge. Further studies based on this data set are planned to study the demonstration of other soft skills.